We're going to talk about a really important topic today. I'm going to share my screen, make us a little smaller here. Perhaps for the next few days, you'll find us talking about data sources because you really need to know what data source you should be using for your Power Apps projects. Now, Kurt, this is your most favorite data source, and that's Excel, right? It is. I love talking about it because I think it's a terrible data source. But the thing is, is so many people, it's their first reach. Their people are tempted to go to Excel because they know Excel. They understand rows and columns. And if you say table, they think fields and records. I don't know that. I just know rows and columns. But it gets you in trouble pretty quick, I think. It can. Absolutely. One of the first talking points I've up here is the ubiquitousness of Excel. So it's present, appearing, or found everywhere. And you could almost lump in uh, perhaps Google Sheets with this, but if you're looking to use it as a data source, of course, we're talking about Excel, but just the ubiquitousness of spreadsheets. Everybody understands the columns and the rows. Typically, you'd use Excel spreadsheets for financial information, right? Budgets and uh, things like that. But people use it as a database because it's so ubiquitous. It's so, number two, easy to create. True. Number three, everyone's familiar with them, right? So, do you have any? Do you have anything more positive to say about it as Excel as a data source? Well, I mean, I, I guess I just I, I think I said it all earlier, but I just want to say that it's just it's it's usually your first. You're tempted to be your first grab because it, you're so familiar with it, um, and it's just so easy when they say, "Hey, you can make an app just with this," but boy, you can get yourself so much trouble with it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I do have, I did open up a, a little Excel document here. Oh, and um, so <laughs> I was playing around and and one of the things and, and guys, we've got, so here's just a few pros. Boy, do we have lots of cons, don't we? <laughs> Let's steer people away from this stuff. Well, you know what, what I want to tell people, encourage people is if, if you know Excel and you, this is your first time you've really worked with Power Apps, since this is a new thing for you, the Power Apps is such a new thing. Take the time to learn something new. Try, take the time to learn about the data sources that are on the other side of this, you know, that are not Excel, you know, mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. <clears throat> One of the biggest uh, drawbacks using Excel, you'll find this out really quick because you'll have your Excel spreadsheet up and you're working on it. Like, Oh, I want my power apps to talk to this thing. Well, the first thing you, that you need to understand is you need to create, you need to select all your columns and your rows. And uh, what you'll find on the top of the ribbon here within Excel, if I can make this a little wider here, format table as a table. Okay. And it will confirm the cells that were selected and it creates it as a table. Yeah. Then you'll upload it and and realize that if you go over to a tab called data table design, that's going to be your your data source right there. Do you guys see that? I'm going to do a control one here. Look at this. Table one. You see that table one? That is your your data source in Power Apps. If you bring it in now, if you go to the bottom, it says sheet one. It's not your data source name. It's whatever you call that, that table. Okay. So we could say customers here, but you'll save it. You'll upload it and you'll go over to power apps and you try to connect to it. And it's like, Nope, it's locked. Well, <laughs> chances are, you know, if you want to get at this, you got to put it in OneDrive or a SharePoint site. So it's going to be based. It's going to be out there in the cloud, either in OneDrive or SharePoint. And because you have it open, it's not going to allow you to connect because only one person can connect at one one time. Now think about this. This, this goes into the last thing I put in here as a on the pro is might be fine for, for personal use. Okay. But why would you create an app just for yourself? You know, typically you're creating an app. Well, why, why create an app at all, Kurt? Why, why not just have a spreadsheet sitting out there that we can, you know, build onto and, and everybody just use the spreadsheet, you know, can you give me maybe one or two reasons why you don't want to build an app out of a spreadsheet? Well, consider this. Consider that you got this great idea for this app. You got this spreadsheet that the, the company's been using for 150 years. And so you're back in Lotus. And, and now you, you want to put an app in there. And you make this great app. You take all morning getting this app ready to go. And then you say, hey, guys, check it out. And then Snuffy Smith, one of your coworkers, 
gets in there and sees sees this app, or, or they just get into the spreadsheet and say, you know, I'm making a change in here. Oh, it's lunchtime. I'm going to go to lunch. But their spreadsheet's still open. Well, now if somebody tries to use their app, maybe your boss looks at the app and says, it's locked out. It doesn't work. And usually you get, when it comes to the big guys, your bosses, you get usually 30 seconds, right? And then if, if, if it doesn't work, it's like, okay, no good. Not to the next thing. So you lose, you lose your whole opportunity right there, you know, because yeah. Snuffy Smith was in a spreadsheet and went to lunch. <laughs> you couldn't do nothing about it. Absolutely. How's that? And something that, that you had mentioned to me a few moments ago is the sloppy data typing. What do we mean by sloppy data typing? Well, I created a record for Darren Neese here. And uh, as you can see, I was, I was, uh, if this was my birthday, I was born last night. Um, but I was going to add Kurt in here. And for your name, I was just going to 23. I, I guess Michael Jordan's your favorite basketball player. So I put 23 in there instead of the, the name Kurt. Um, remember that. Your age, you know, I'm going to type in old. <sighs> Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. So <laughs> talk about a sloppy data typing. Uh, you need some strong typing in a good system because somebody somewhere, they always say, make your app foolproof. Well, you give them a spreadsheet, they're going to mess it up. Even yourself as a programmer, if you're if you're building much of an app, and I love hard typing, I call it hard typing or or you know um, uh, real typing, um, because that way if I make a mistake in my code, it's not going to allow me to do any kind of formulas with that if it's if it's not the right data type. And of course, I'm sure we're going to have um, some videos on typing. I'm sure we're going to in the future. So if, if you if if what I'm saying sounds like Chinese to you, don't worry. We're going to go ahead and we're going to explain all that later. Yeah, and in what you've got in a real database, when I say real database, I'm talking like SQL Server or Dataverse. And and to be honest, SharePoint, at least SharePoint has got indexes. How do I create an index? I mean, you you think about it a a table. If you read a book, table contents is a a, a, a what I would call it a clustered index in SQL Server. It's the physical order of the book. But we'll go over to the glossary. Go over to the index in the back. It's an index. Okay, here's all the words, and here's all the page numbers where you can find it. That is an index. How do I create an index on name? Let's say I've got 5,000 people in here, and I want to index something. I, I, I don't know that that's possible. I'm not a, an Excel expert, but guys, if if essentially when you just talk about data source, you're talking about a database, Okay. And you want to be able to create indexes to make your searches faster. Okay. Um, it does create its own little primary key. What you'll notice is it'll create a little Power Apps ID there. It's not very pretty and it looks ugly and it's a GUID. And I really don't care for that. So I put that down here as a con. Uh, your table names don't follow the sheet names. Now we, we talked about that. So bringing this down here, your table name is going to be called Sheet One. Right. Because you can have other data on there and you can have a, a table created inside of that. So you can have this great big spreadsheet of stuff and make a small table out of that. So if you you're thinking sheet one is it, but sheet one is the entire uh, spreadsheet and your table might only be three or four columns. So you got to, yeah. it's, you got there's a lot to remember with that, you know? Yeah. So you have the, the sheet names that you create like another database table, another data source by creating a new sheet and then creating another table in here and just realize those table names and sheet names are completely independent. So I've got that down as a con must create tables for it to be consumed. I've gone over that and um, it's hard to keep others out. So let's say you're not in it. Uh, it's sitting out there in SharePoint. Well, if they got access to the SharePoint site, guess what? They're in there. They're messing with it. They delete things. It's not very secure. No, it lends it lends for sloppiness everywhere. In fact, you could actually make multiple tables on one spreadsheet, and so that you, you have multiple data sources going to one spreadsheet. So it just lends for sloppiness all the way around. So, Kurt, do you have anything more to say about using Excel as a data source? I nope. I just just don't do it. Don't do it. Put a big red X across that. <laughs> no. no. So eventually, you guys, we're going to go over the other data sources, the ones that we would recommend. 
Um, but hopefully you and you guys enjoy that. And if by any chance, any of you aren't in the accelerator system, Hey, there's a link at the top. Now notice, I noticed this a few days ago, we misspelled the link up there and I've got it fixed. So if you misspell it or you spell it right, the word accelerator, it will, it will now work. So the links up there, you guys have a great yeah. day and, uh, looking forward to talking with you tomorrow in the next personal pocket coaching session.